Baseball is a sport of dreams for youngsters who dream of one day lacing up their spikes to play in the big leagues, for the pros who still dream of hitting a game-winning home run or pitching a no-hitter, for Milwaukee Brewer fans, team officials, and community leaders, there have been dreams of a new ballpark, a bold vision of the most unique ballpark in all of baseball. That vision, that dream, is now a reality. Welcome to the new home of the Milwaukee Brewers, Miller Park, a dream come true. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Euchre. For the past 31 years, I've been proud to have been part of the Brewers broadcast team. Prior to that, I played for three major league teams. In fact, I started my major league career right here in my hometown with the Milwaukee Braves. So when it comes to baseball, I've seen just about all there is to see. But I have never seen anything like this. Miller Park is a ballpark beyond our wildest dreams. This is the story of how that dream came true. The heritage of Miller Park can be traced back to April 14, 1953. That was the day the Milwaukee Braves played their first home game. It also marked the first official game in brand new Milwaukee County Stadium. That day too was a dream come true. Milwaukee had dreamed of a big league team and a shining new ballpark for decades. The Braves, their fans, and the new stadium combined to create the Milwaukee miracle. The team was an instant contender and the ballpark shattered all existing attendance records. Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, and Warren Spawn led the Braves to two National League pennants and a world championship. The stadium also became the part-time home of the Green Bay Packers. Sadly, Milwaukee's dreams were dashed when the Braves left town after the 1965 season. But thanks to the work of Bud Selig and others, Baseball returned five years later with the birth of the American League Brewers. Boomer, Bambi's Bombers, Harvey's Wallbangers, Molly, Gumby, and the Kid all became legends. In 1982, the Brewers won the pennant and brought Milwaukee another World Series. County Stadium was the site of many wonderful moments. The 0-1 pitch swings and here it is! On a perfect September evening in the year 2000, the legends return, not to play on their field of dreams, but to say goodbye to it. So long, old friend. And good night, everybody. It was hard not to shed a tear when a demolition team reduced County Stadium to rubble in January of 2001. However, just a few months after the dust settled, it was time to celebrate a new era of baseball in Milwaukee. Opening day programs here. Yes, sir. Fans arrived early on April 6th for the official opening of Miller Park taking pictures and staring in awe at its massive exterior. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's, the structure is unbelievable. It's like nothing I've ever seen. I have, there's no other words for it. It's just really unbelievable. Beautiful. Just wonderful. Very well done. It looks a lot bigger than I thought. 
For opening night tailgaters, the magnitude of Miller Park hit home before their first bite of a bratwurst. I would expect a city like San Francisco or New York to have a stadium like this, but not Little Milwaukee. And it's, it's nice to see. It's very nice to see that Milwaukee finally got a new stadium. Once inside, young fans took in the scene with wide-eyed amazement. Standing inside Miller Park's cozy confines, covered by a gigantic retractable roof, filled even veteran fans with youthful delight. Couldn't even imagine what it looked like until you got inside. You saw the pictures on the internet. You got in here. Totally blew me away when I saw it for the first time. Can't believe so they built something like this in Milwaukee. When you first uh, saw it being built, I um, just thought of a stadium, enclosed with a dome, and then you see it. You come in here and you look, and you see the retractable roof and the, the glass that opens up, and I don't know, it's just, just in awe. For yours truly, it was certainly awe-inspiring to be a part of Miller Park's opening ceremonies. What a thrill to introduce baseball commissioner Bud Selig to a standing ovation. Selig fought and won bitter battles to keep baseball in Milwaukee and to build Miller Park. The show of appreciation was an emotional moment. After, after all these years and all the struggles, it's hard for me to articulate one of the few times in my life how I feel today. I'm proud and I'm happy. And the joy and the happiness that I've seen in this community for the last month has made me very, very happy. Milwaukee fans always love to see Robin Young. What an honor it is for me to be here to share with you the opening of this beautiful ballpark. When I recently toured this facility, I was in awe. I truly wanted to put the uniform back on and play again. It was a presentation befitting the new Palace of America's pastime. Who better to throw out the first pitch than the president, George W. Bush? It was the first time any sitting U.S. president attended a Wisconsin sporting event. The flash of fans' cameras recorded the historic moment. The pitch, low and a bit outside, but fans cheered nonetheless. Youngsters from each of Wisconsin's 72 counties then presented a huge American flag for the national anthem. As the final verse filled the ballpark, Challenger, an American bald eagle, swooped down from the rafters to the pitcher's mound. The only thing missing was fireworks, and the players would provide plenty. The Brewers' Jeff D'Amico came out throwing smoke. The Cincinnati Reds' Michael Tucker hit the first home run in Miller Park. But it was this blast by the Brewers' Jeremy Burnitz that whipped the crowd into a frenzy. With the game tied in the bottom of the eighth, Richie Sexton launched a 435-foot shot to left to give the Brewers a 5-4 lead. The sunout crowd of 42,000 went wild. In the ninth, with the fans on their feet, David Weathers recorded a game-winning strikeout. Got it! Miller Park's opening night couldn't have been scripted any better. 
But the fact is, Miller Park was designed to be a stunning success from the very beginning. In 1994, Brewers president Bud Selig made it clear Milwaukee's new ballpark would be something special. Three designs were unveiled, all with retractable roofs, an arch design, a fan-shaped roof plan, and a tent concept. This concept is exciting. It's exciting because it redefines our market. We can do something here and build something that nobody anywhere has done. The concept evolved into a turn-of-the-century feel for the main structure, topped by a high-tech convertible roof. Of the three concepts, the fan design seemed to fit the shape of a baseball field like a hand in a glove. In November of 1995, HKS Incorporated of Dallas was named the winner of the stadium design competition. Although our team had not done 15 ballparks like some of the other competitors, that we were really willing to sit down with them and listen to exactly what they wanted and come up with something really truly different from all the other ballpark experiences. HKS teamed up with NBBJ and the Milwaukee architectural firm of Epstein Ewan. The design team set out to not only create a one-of-a-kind ballpark, but a new fan experience over the entire 300-acre site. Picnic areas along the Menominee River and concession facilities in the parking areas would set Miller Park apart from other stadiums. What's really unique about Miller Park, really unlike any other park in the, in the, in the world, quite frankly, is the whole notion of uh, the fan tailgating experience. And Miller Park has been specifically designed to enhance that tailgating experience. The design for the exterior of Miller Park is an architectural throwback incorporating a mixture of concrete, stone, and brick. However, the roof and interior designs are one of a kind. As a result, the seats and luxury boxes are closer to the action, a feat achieved by splitting the lower bowl. And what it also did that hasn't been done previously in baseball was that it allowed everybody to walk in from outside the building on grade level, walk into the main concourse level, and then walk up behind the back row of seats, which is now the 20th row, and have an incredible view of the action as they're walking into the ball game. And that's about twice as close as any other major league ballpark. The architects of Miller Park covered all the bases. They created a wide variety of concession areas and restaurants. Original murals adorn the walls, and above it all, sits a roof that converts an indoor facility to an outdoor venue in a matter of 10 minutes. Miller Park is proof that the right design team can make dreams come true. No matter what city you call home, financing and building a major league ballpark is a difficult undertaking. If any public money is involved, there will be great political debate. The financial, emotional and political struggles required to build Miller Park placed it in a league all its own. This ballpark became the most scrutinized construction project in Wisconsin history. In 1994, then Governor Tommy Thompson and Brewers President Bud Selig began a quest for a public-private partnership to build a new ballpark. The first viable plan was for the Brewers to pay for part of the project while the other portion would come from monies generated by a statewide sports lottery. The plan was passed by state lawmakers in June of 94, but it still required approval from a statewide referendum. However, in August, while a lottery campaign was in full swing, baseball hit the skids with a strike. The 1994 season was lost, and so was the momentum for a new ballpark. The longest strike in sports history finally ended in April of 1995. Just two days later, the sports lottery struck out with the voters. Decision 95, the sports lottery. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us as we continue covering today's election. As you may know by now, Wisconsin voters have said no, overwhelmingly no, to the idea of a sports lottery. The governor, Milwaukee's county executive, Milwaukee's mayor and the Brewers president went back to the drawing board and four months later came up with an agreement called 
the Memorandum of Understanding. The deal called for a $250 million stadium, $90 million to be paid by the team, and $160 million generated by a sales and hotel tax in Milwaukee and Waukesha counties. The pitch, Ward sends one to right, way back, get up, get up and get out of here and it's gone. The pitch seemed to be a hit with fans, but the deal would again have to be sold to the legislature. Genuine draft. It's gonna take a lot. There's no question about it, it's not gonna be an easy sell. The Wisconsin state capitol has seen heated debate on budgets and bills for decades, but the battle over the Brewers stadium was unprecedented. Certainly in the 12 years I've been up lobbying the legislature, I've never seen an issue like this in terms of the attention, the theater, the drama. Debates on the floor and lobbying efforts outside were intense. At midnight on October 6th, the plan was voted down for the second time. There are 15 ayes, 16 noes. The Senate fails to concur in Assembly Bill 1. Parliamentary procedure and closed-door caucusing kept senators in the building for four hours. One senator, Democrat Joe Wynicke, disappeared for a time. I want to direct the Sergeant of Arms staff, the Chief Clerk, to notify the local police to find the senator who is missing. The senator was located asleep in a corner of the Capitol. Finally, a third vote just before 5 a.m. on October 7th proved to be the game winner. There are 16 ayes, 15 noes. The Senate concurs in Assembly Bill 1. The Senate will come to order. Racine Senator George Petak had promised to vote against the tax for his district, but then changed his vote to a yes. I did what I thought was right uh, for uh, Milwaukee, what was right for the state of Wisconsin, what was right for uh, the, uh, the people who are going to come uh, after we're here. Here comes Fernandez. Jaha sends one to right center. Deep, way back. Get up. Get out of here. Go! For Jaha! PTAC's vote probably saved Major League Baseball in Wisconsin, but it would cost him his political position. Over the next few months, Governor Thompson signed the financing plan into law, and a 13-member stadium board was formed. There was more progress with Miller Brewing securing the ballpark naming rights. We also had not heard the last of financing troubles for what was now called Miller Park. So the team and business leaders fashioned a new proposal. The stadium board voted eight to five against the new financing plan. The outlook for a new ballpark was bleak. Yeah, I think baseball's gone forever in Milwaukee. Following the vote, an emotional Bud Selig held a news conference outside County Stadium. If there is anybody left in the state of Wisconsin tonight who doesn't believe that this was political and had nothing to do with economics, then you haven't followed the story. Later that night, as the Brewers beat up on the Oakland A's, Selig stepped out on the balcony in front of the press box at County Stadium. A few fans began to clap, and then the entire stadium began to chant. Bud, Bud, the fans were ready to be heard. The following day, a mob scene greeted Governor Thompson as he arrived for a meeting with Selig at County Stadium. The two men renewed their resolve to build Miller Park. Selig could sense a momentum swing. Later that day, some 10,000 fans attended a Build It Now rally. Our children and our children's children will enjoy Major League Baseball because of what you did here today and in the coming days. Thank you. Just four days later, on June 26th, the Bradley Foundation stepped up to the plate with a charitable loan. What we're saying is we've got $20 million, we're putting it on the table, and let's figure it out. Cheers. <laughs> Within three days, it was Miller time. Joining the foundations in loaning the Brewers money were the city of Milwaukee and the business community. 
Bud Selig, the mayor, the county exec, and the governor were finally all in agreement. The deal was done, and Miller Park was set to welcome fans in April of 2000. Uh, I'm delighted, uh, as I'm sure everybody is, that we finally have some degree of finality. In just over two weeks, the fans and foundations had rescued the ballpark from political destruction and turned despair into triumph. It was time to build it now. Excavation at the Miller Park site began in October. On November 9, 1996, the official Miller Park groundbreaking drew politicians, past and present, baseball legends, and 15,000 fans. I thought the Brewers were gone. I didn't think we had a chance at this. We do, and we're here. Thank you. Thank you. It was a day for souvenir baseballs and celebration, a historic day shared by the young and young at heart. One more time, don't move. As fans relished in the turning of ceremonial soil, Bud Selig thanked them for keeping baseball in Milwaukee. When this park is up, and the next generation or two are enjoying it. Remember, it was decency and your will that produced it. In the spring of 1997, the first sound emanating from the vicinity of County Stadium was not the crack of a bat, 1700 of these. but the pounding of piers and posts for the foundation of Miller Park. The construction of the ballpark would be a joint venture between the Indianapolis firm of Huber, Hunt & Nichols, Clark Construction, and Hunzinger Construction. Their goal was posted for all to see, to build a world-class ballpark for the Brewers and the citizens of Wisconsin. The stadium board also hired an executive director to oversee the entire project, a soft-spoken Milwaukee engineer named Mike Duckett. He had a great temperament for the job. He was uh, very, uh, very low key, very analytical, uh, but really worked through the problems. That was a very critical hire we made and it was uh, obviously the best hire we could have made. He was the right man for the job. Under Duckett's watchful eyes, foundation work and the erection of the seating bowl progressed quickly. Soon concrete flowed into the bowl and the track beam on which the massive roof would roll. On the two-year anniversary of the groundbreaking, the project was beginning to resemble a ballpark and dwarf nearby County Stadium. The immensity of the project was beginning to sink in. I don't think people really know what it takes to uh, build a building like this, a stadium, this big and this massive. I don't think people really realize how much work's involved. The time, the effort, the broken fingernails, stubbed toes, pulled shoulders and muscles. The material used to build the ballpark would equal that of a 50-story skyscraper. When complete, Miller Park would tip the scales at 500,000 tons, making it one of the heaviest structures in Wisconsin. It's really wild. You know, everything that you're doing out here, everything that you get is heavy. Nothing light about it. At its highest point, Miller Park would reach more than 300 feet three times taller than County Stadium. One of the world's largest cranes, nicknamed Big Blue, was assembled from 150 semi-loads of parts on site. The crane's mass stretched more than 500 feet into the sky in order to lift sections of the gigantic roof into place. The movable roof, designed and built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries of America, would cover 10 acres, the equivalent of more than seven football fields. At peak times, as many as 750 men and women were working on site. Miller Park was now a monstrous project, but one still under a political and media microscope. Every little thing that happened in Miller Park was a big deal. And every molehill was a mountain. And that, that was a, a challenge that the workers had to, had to fight their way through. Uh, the district board had to fight their way through. The brewers dealt with on a daily basis. That just made it all that much more challenging. Yet for the workers, especially the iron workers who were riding and fitting steel girders in the sky, success in the face of scrutiny was building pride. 
It's all hard work. It's big iron. It's hard. It's tough. But uh, you get you get a real uh, sense of pride, a real good feeling in your heart, knowing that you're doing something that not just yourself is going to use here. You know, the whole people, everyone in Wisconsin is going to use this. I feel like I'm building history here. This thing will be long here long after I'm dead. People will be coming to this stadium for years after I, my work means something here. In July of 1999, spirits were rising with each piece of steel. Just after 5 o'clock on July 14th, everything changed. Big Blue was lifting a 450-ton roof section when tragedy struck. Good evening, everyone. It has been a tragic day at Miller Park. About 5.15 this afternoon, the construction crane known as Big Blue collapsed. Following three loud pops and the groaning of steel from the base of Big Blue, Going on here. Okay, watch it, watch it. The giant crane toppled over the side of the stadium, smashing its load onto previously installed roof panels. As the mast of Big Blue fell, it clipped the basket of another crane inside the ballpark. Three iron workers were riding in that basket as it crashed to the ground. Jerome Starr, Jeffrey Wisher, and William DeGrave were killed. Brewer and Miller Park officials were both stunned by the damage and grief stricken by the loss of life. It really truly was a personal loss. It was one of those things that you, you go through the whole range of emotions, the disbelief, it just, the impossible has happened, it, it couldn't have happened. Uh, then you go through the denial, you go through grief and anger. Um, just an in incredibly difficult time for all of us. As night fell, Miller Park no longer looked like a future home to joyful fans and the boys of summer, but rather a menacing mass of twisted steel. In the days that followed, grief and uncertainty at the construction site gave way to a commitment to pick up the pieces and bring the job home. You had the project about 65 percent constructed and you have a tragic accident like that and you throw everybody in the room and everybody just stood up and said look we're gonna get this done we're gonna build it in memory of these guys and all the workers out here we're gonna do it the right way and we're gonna move forward cleaning up the debris and reconstructing the damage would add a full year to the project the stadium board had insurance to cover the costs of repairs but no amount of money could bring back William DeGrave, Jeffrey Wisher, and Jerome Starr to the wives and children they left behind. Miller Park would now serve as a reminder of the dangers workers confront every day and as a monument to the men who died building it. From the groundbreaking in November of 1996 to the new opening date of April 2001, some 5,000 construction workers and another 1,000 architects, attorneys, accountants, and engineers worked on Miller Park. 82% of those workers were residents of the state of Wisconsin. The project met and exceeded mandated goals for minority and women participation. It was a workforce to be reckoned with. And they've all pulled together and done what I think is a, a good old traditional Midwest Wisconsin job. They, Great pride in their work, hard workers, dedicated workers, uh, put up with the worst the Wisconsin winters could throw at them, the worst the summer heat could throw at them, and just did a fantastic job for us. What can you say about the 13-member board that managed the project for five and a half years? They volunteered their time away from important jobs and their families to shepherd this job to completion. You couldn't write a more difficult script for a project like this. You had financing issues at the beginning, you had construction issues at the beginning, you had a tragic accident, and then all through this entire project, you still had a board focused on building the best ballpark in Major League Baseball. Those 13 members under Bob Trunzo's leadership were just phenomenal. They truly came together as a family. They endured, they endured the tragedy that only a family can, can bond together they recognized Miller Park for what she was. She was like a member of our family 
and they would work to defend her with their last breath. And, and ultimately, on her wedding day, when we opened her up for the opening day and we, we let our elbow go and Miller Park now became the, the property of the state of Wisconsin and the citizens of our state, they were the proud parents that they should be. There is so much to be proud of. Miller Park is a magnificent blend of old and new. The friendliness and intimacy of yesteryear, but with all the modern amenities. The view from the press box is the best in baseball. This time, I really am in the front row. And I've had the fortune of looking at all the new ballparks, and they're all wonderful. We've learned a tremendous amount from them. But I can tell you, having seen them all, there's nothing out there better than Miller Park. And what makes Miller Park so wonderful is the fact that it will be a signature for this community. The colossal roof ensures every game will be played. National it's League. Park. Following the game on that glorious opening night, the roof on Miller Park opened to reveal a driving rain fans hadn't even noticed. Thousands cheered wildly as they got wet. Young fans could hardly contain their joy and amazement that Milwaukee is now home to something truly special. Older fans felt like kids again. That moment epitomized the gift of Miller Park, the preservation of professional baseball in Milwaukee for generations to come. Miller Park and its impact on Milwaukee and Wisconsin will stun people. I don't think even today any of us understand the impact that that magnificent structure will make on this city and on this state. Miller Park's restaurants and retail stores will now serve as a year-round destination for fans. One can only imagine what types of events this building may host Make no mistake, this is a ballpark. Outside, the statues of Milwaukee legends Hank Aaron and Robin Yount serve as both a tribute to our glorious baseball past and as an inspiration to the heroes yet to come. Miller Park is indeed a dream come true. It was worth the wait, and it stands as a tribute to all who worked to make it a reality. This ballpark holds the promise of so many things. A new era is upon us. Inside Miller Park, the memories are waiting.